This is an important message from the government. For now, we must all still stay at home. It can be hard, but it's making a difference. So please keep going for the ones you love. Keep going for every key worker on the front line as they keep going for us. Keep going because together we will beat the virus. To all of you making sacrifices every day, thank you. Stay home, protect the NHS, save lives. Hi, and welcome back to the Unseen Podcast, a podcast dedicated to missing people, unresolved cases, and UK true crime. Today we are going to be delving into the case of Fred Hanford in Derbyshire in 1976. His disappearance was a mystery to those that knew him at the time. However, in 2011, there would be a twist in the tale that would lead people to wonder what exactly had happened to Fred Hanford. I have used the ITV documentary Am I a Murderer, amongst other sources in my research, and the link to it will be in the show notes. As always, this episode contains descriptions that some listeners may find distressing, so listener discretion is advised. The town of New Mills is located in High Peak in the county of Derbyshire, just 8 miles from the town of Stockport and 15 miles away from the city of Manchester. Despite its close proximity to the more metropolitan areas, New Mills is also next to the Peak District National Park, with part of the town being located in the park. The Peak District is a beautiful part of the country with stunning landscapes and rural views. New Mills, as part of the rural landscape, also benefits from the countryside lifestyle, with a lot of its industry in the 19th and 20th century, initially based on agriculture, as well as coal mining and cotton spinning. Today, New Mills is well connected to its surrounding areas, however the rolling hills and views are still a huge part of the town. Fred Hanford lived in the town and owned Ball Beard Farm, just out of the centre. He owned the farm throughout the 1950s, 60s and 70s and lived there with his wife and children for a time before eventually living there alone. The farm was old and like many in the area at the time did not have running water or electricity. It could be said that he lived quite a basic lifestyle as did some of the other residents in the area. Fred enjoyed the old ways of farming and staunchly rejected the new technology and equipment that was being employed. He did not use a tractor and would plough and take care of the land using shire horses that would pull the equipment he needed. Many people in the town knew of Fred's old-fashioned ways, but also knew that he worked hard and looked after the farm and his animals well. He enjoyed farm life and took pride in what he achieved there. By the 1970s, Fred was very well skilled in maintaining the farm and knew exactly what he needed to do to keep it ticking over. He did, however, draft in some help to work with the animals and with the general upkeep. Janet Holt was just 14 when she first started to work with Fred on the farm. She kept a pony on his land and would go up to look after it. By the time she was 21, Janet had taken more of a role on the farm and her and Fred decided to become business partners, both sharing the responsibility of maintaining the fields and the animals. This seemed to work for both Fred and Janet, and by 1976 the pair had a working relationship. This was the case until March 1976, when a strange series of events would unfold. This was the case until March 1976, when a strange series of events would unfold. On a Saturday morning, police officer Roger Cooper from Derbyshire Constabulary received a radio call with a report that a person had gone missing from Ballbeard Farm. This was quite a regular call to receive in general, as quite often people would be reported missing and then turn up soon afterwards. This is what Roger Cooper assumed would happen in this case and was not hugely concerned about it. He did travel up to the farm to investigate and find out more information. He spoke to the ITV documentary Am I a Murderer about what happened when he arrived at the farm. He explained that when he got there he noticed that a woman was already there and appeared to be feeding some of the animals. 
she introduced herself as Janet Holt and explained her role at the farm. She would later tell police that she noticed something was wrong that morning when jobs had not been done, such as milking one of the cows and feeding the animals. She thought it was strange that none of this had been done that morning. Janet took PC Cooper around the different buildings at the farm and he searched them for any sign of Fred. He also walked around the fields and the walls of the land to check that Fred had not had an accident or collapsed and needed help. He did not, however, find anything out of place. When he searched the farmhouse, he did notice one thing that he would later explain seemed odd to him after speaking to people who knew Fred. He had left his flat cap in the house and his three dogs were also in there, including his favourite dog, Daisy. People who knew him said they never saw him leave the house without his cap or his dogs and that it would have been unusual for him to do so. PC Cooper returned to the police station to contact family members to let them know that Fred had gone missing. Fred's daughter Lynette also spoke to the documentary, explaining that when she was told that her father was missing, she was not immediately concerned. She thought he would turn up, which was a sentiment also shared by Fred's cousin Wilfred. Despite the fact that his disappearance was not a concern initially, it was soon evident that he had not returned and that was out of character for him as he loved everything about his farm and the animals there. Police decided that they would search the surrounding fields and moors using police dogs in the hope that they picked up Fred's scent. This, however, was unsuccessful, as they did not find anything relating to him. The surrounding fields, however, were large, and the rural location of both the farm and New Mills itself did not make it easy to conduct a search. Roger Cooper explained that Mountain Rescue also did the same search the next day, in order to cover more ground, however once again nothing was found. One of the focuses of the investigation were the many air vents that were stuck up across the landscape that were previously used for the coal mines beneath. These were quite large structures with a metal grate across the top of it. The coal board advised that nobody should go down into the air vents for their own safety due to its depth and the amount of water that was probably at the bottom of them. The concern was that if Fred had somehow ended up in one of these air vents, nobody would know. Detectives questioned Janet as she was one of the last people to see Fred before his disappearance. She was, however, not much help to the investigation as she was unsure when she had last seen him and what she was doing the day before the police were called to the farm. She later said that she was bewildered by the experience and that there were lots of details missing in her recollection. Detectives continued to try and search for Fred, however after several days the investigation came to a slow halt. There was no evidence of Fred anywhere and they had not come across his body in the surrounding areas. It was unclear what had happened to him, however it's reported in the documentary that there were rumours that the police believed that perhaps he had committed suicide. This was due to the speculation that the farm was not doing well and that Fred had money problems. Fred's family, however, did not believe that he would have taken his own life. Fred's cousin Wilfred stated that he would never do that, while his daughter Lynette theorised that if he had have done that, his remains would have been found, as he would have been unable to hide his own body. Where Fred was was baffling to the detectives, as like in many other missing person cases, it did appear that he had just vanished that day, leaving behind all his precious possessions, including his beloved dogs. Fred's family were devastated that they couldn't find him, but also dissatisfied by the conclusion of the police investigation. They did not believe that he could have disappeared without a trace, with no one witnessing anything. Without any evidence, Fred's missing person report went cold, but still remained open. The community in New Mills did not forget about Fred in the intervening years, and there was continued speculation about where he could have gone. There were quite a few things in Fred's case that did not seem to make sense and lots of people that knew him believe there must be something more to his disappearance. In the later years, he was declared legally dead, and the farm passed to his family members. They later sold the farm to Janet Holt, who continued to look after it for several years before moving away from New Mills. This would not be the last time that the public heard about Fred's case, or from Janet Holt. 
it was many years later that the case would once again hit national headlines. In 2011, then-Detective Inspector Sean McElron at Derbyshire Constabulary was nearing the end of his shift when he received a phone call about some information that had come in from a member of the public. He was told that the call had come from a Miss Janet Holt, who had confessed on the phone that she had killed Fred Hanford at Ballbeard Farm back in 1976. This was not a usual phone call for the police to receive, and Detective Inspector McElron was surprised by this information. He spoke to Janet and was satisfied after speaking to her that she knew information about the case and there could be something to her confession. Janet was remanded in custody and was questioned about the murder and how it came about. The news that Janet had been arrested in connection with Fred's murder spread throughout New Mills and there were whisperings within the community that she had always been somewhat of a suspicious character and had known connections to Fred and the farm. One thing that was being asked was why had she come forward now to admit this crime? How had her confession come about? This was something that the police were equally interested in hearing about as so much time had elapsed since his disappearance. Janet went on to tell the police an extremely surprising and almost unbelievable story about what had happened to her in the intervening years. She would later explain on the ITV documentary Am I a Murderer? that since 1976, she had had recurring nightmares that would terrify her and leave her traumatised. She regularly had worries and fears and was not sure why. The nightmares got so bad that she started researching them online and read some articles about how writing down her experiences could help. She decided to start writing an autobiography about her life as a farmer, as this was something she'd always wanted to do, and she hoped that by writing down her experiences, it would also help get rid of the nightmares. In 2010, Janet began working with a ghostwriter, journalist Helen Parker, who began co-writing her autobiography. Helen explained that she wanted to help Janet get to the bottom of the nightmares that she was having and suggested that she go for therapy, which could help understand her feelings. Janet agreed and she booked on for the EMDR therapy. EMDR stands for Eye Movement Desensitization, Reprocessing, and is a psychotherapy technique which is used to relieve psychological stress. It was initially designed to alleviate the stress caused by traumatic memories. It is often used to help with trauma and post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. The therapy involves recalling traumatic events and attempts to work out why the patient is having negative thoughts and feelings. The therapy has been seen to be effective in those with PTSD and those with symptoms of trauma. Janet signed up for four sessions and she explained that it was on the last session that she felt a huge feeling of terror and the hour session ended up lasting five hours. She had to be taken away in an ambulance because she'd become so overcome by her thoughts. Over the next few days, Janet then stated that memories started to come back to her and they involved Fred and Ballbeard Farm. She explained in the documentary that she remembered an incident that had happened to her during 1976. Janet stated that the memory that came back to her was that Fred had raped her twice at the farm. She said at the end of the sessions, the nightmares ended and that she no longer had these negative thoughts. Janet told Helen Parker about what she'd remembered and said that she must have just held back the memory for all those years. This, however, would not be the last thing that Janet would remember about 1976. About a year later in 2011, Janet would have another memory come flooding back to her. She would later tell police the same memory. She explained that she had gone up to the farm after the rapes had occurred and was in the kitchen when Fred came in and closed the door. He then stood in front of it. Janet said that he started telling her that they could get married, have children and run the farm together. She said she couldn't believe what he was telling her and became concerned that she couldn't get out of the room because Fred was stood in the way. She said she was worried that he would rape her again. Janet spotted Fred's shotgun that was leaning against the wall and decided to pick it up. When his back was turned, she shot him at point-blank range. Janet said he fell to the floor and she said she was expecting him to try and get back up again but he didn't move. 
she realised that she had to get rid of the body and found a wheelbarrow. She explained she used a hay bale hook and hooked it into his coat. She tipped him into the wheelbarrow, and she then wheeled it around the yard and then around into the field. She dug a hole and tipped him into it. She said she filled it in and then left the farm and went home. She told the documentary that she remembered thinking that she was glad he was dead at the time and said she thought he was a bastard. This story was shocking to the police and they did take it seriously from the beginning. Detective Inspector Paul Callum, who was tasked with investigating Janet's confession and Fred's case, explained that he understood that traumatic memories can sometimes be buried and was open-minded about her confession. The detectives officially arrested Janet and asked her to point out where she had buried Fred. They then began excavating the area to try and corroborate what Janet had told them. While this was happening, Fred's family heard about the arrest and Fred's daughter Lynette was glad that there may be finally closure and she might be able to bury her dad. The area in the field that Janet pointed out was excavated by police and aerial photographs of the location were also taken. This was to check for any changes in the composition of the soil and was analysed by an archaeologist. When the police dug down, however, they didn't find Fred's body or actually any indication that the field had been dug up at all to conceal a body. This cast some doubt upon Janet's account of the events after she killed Fred. When told by the police that Fred's body was not found where she said she'd buried it, Janet told them that in the late 80s or early 90s, a new pipeline was built leading to the reservoir, and this disturbed the land where she'd buried Fred. The police disputed this, however, with plans of the pipeline that showed that it had not affected the area of field that Janet had pointed out to the detectives. Janet continued to maintain that it was the place where she'd buried him and that she was the one that had killed him. The police, however, were not convinced by her story and Detective Inspector Paul Callum told the documentary that he believed there were a number of theories about why Janet had come forward with this information. He stated that she either didn't kill him, she did kill him in other circumstances than she had told the police and he was buried in another place, or she believed that she killed him because of these nightmares and feelings that she'd been having. There appeared to be no physical evidence linking Janet to Fred's disappearance, and there wasn't actually any evidence that Fred had been murdered at all. Detective Inspector Paul Callum told the Mirror newspaper in 2018, We had to look at the facts. We wanted enough certainty to put it to bed one way or another. In the old days, the confession was everything. And although it gives you a big arrow, it's not. People can admit offences for a whole range of reasons. One line of inquiry was that she was trying to get publicity for her book. One argument is that she's done it and we've never found the body, but we've not found evidence to support that. She had been described as quite strong because of being active on the farm, but you're talking about dragging a body into a wheelbarrow, wheeling it around a farm, digging a hole in semi-frozen land, we know the weather was freezing. These are very unlikely things to have happened. In the end, the facts to support her claim just weren't there. Due to the lack of evidence, Janet was released without charge. She continued to maintain that she did murder Fred and that she had buried him at that location. Rumours began to swirl around the town of New Mills with many people now believing that Janet did have something to do with Fred's disappearance. The reasons why they believed that she was involved, however, were different to the reasons stated by Janet. Fred's family in particular were horrified by Janet's statement that Fred had raped her twice, believing that he would not be capable of such a thing. Lynette, Fred's daughter, disclosed that her father was a difficult man to live with and that he had been abusive to her mother in the past, once hitting her so hard that she had to go to hospital. Lynette also stated that she armed herself with a knife against her father on one occasion when she felt threatened. She did not, however, believe Janet's version of events leading up to her father's disappearance. Lynette explained on the documentary that she believed that Janet's motive for killing her father was solely to do with money. She explained that Janet and her father had drawn up a business deal when they became partners that meant if something happened to one of them, then the other one would get the farm. 
Lynette was not the only one to believe that money was a motive for Janet, and the rumours around the town seemed to be that she was very much focused on money. This was disputed by Janet and was somewhat corroborated by the paperwork after Fred was declared dead. The business deal cited by Lynette was never actually signed, and so his family inherited the farm after his disappearance and not Janet. Janet disputed this as a reason, saying she got a loan from the bank to purchase the farm from Fred's family for herself. The money theory was also further brought up when it was found that Janet was having money troubles. She had sold off a number of the buildings at the farm and was living in a trailer on the property instead. It was thought that perhaps she could increase the sales of her book by putting in the story of her killing Fred, giving it more of an exciting ending. This is something else that Janet denied, saying that between her and Helen Parker they probably made around £3,000, and all of her earnings from it had been given to animal charities. This, she said, was not the reason for coming forward with this information after so many years. The story was now in all of the national newspapers and it was such a strange tale that many people became fascinated by Janet and her reasons for confessing to this crime. The fact that she still stated she had murdered a man despite the police releasing her was also a fascination for the public. Police had continued to investigate Janet and had discovered some other worrying parts of her past. She did have a history of criminal activity which they had not discovered previously. Janet had been arrested several times for stealing from petrol stations, falsifying forms and other deception offences. Most notably, she was arrested for embezzling £50,000. She received a sentence of 22 months for this offence, but served only 11. Janet's explanation for this charge was that about a year after Fred's disappearance, she started an affair with a married man that went sour and he left her. She said that she was very upset about it and started stealing money from him in increasing amounts, which eventually amounted to £50,000. She said she hoped that by doing this it would bring him down and that she was just waiting to get caught. Janet said the theft was very out of character and she puts it down to the fact that the rape had affected her a lot more than she had imagined. For many people this conviction proved that Janet was capable of committing a crime to get money and get what she wanted. There was still the possibility that Janet fully believed that she had killed Fred and that her recovered memories were either misleading or had been true. In the documentary, Janet visited a memory expert, Professor Jamie Hacker-Hughes, to try and establish if her memories were real. After speaking with Janet and analysing what she said, he later told the Mirror newspaper, She believed this all to be true, and I believed that she believed it to be. But I remained open about whether or not she committed this crime. He also stated, This field of false memories is highly contentious. There have been arguments about this for decades. Professor Hacker Hughes also said that he wouldn't be able to say for sure that this memory was real in a court of law. It seemed that despite Janet's belief that her memories were real, it was very difficult to prove, and therefore there was a distinct lack of evidence in terms of the police investigation available to prove she had anything to do with Fred's disappearance. The rest of the community were then forced to wonder what had really happened to Fred, and whether Janet did have any involvement as she'd stated. It's clear from the ITV documentary that Fred's daughter Lynette does believe that she had something to do with it and that she was telling the truth when she confessed to killing her father. Lynette, when asked what she thought, discussed the fact that the only person who had anything to benefit from Fred's death was Janet and that she had done well to hide his remains for all these years. Janet reportedly lives close but not in New Mills today and still maintains that she did murder Fred. She says that evidence may be found later down the line and that the police may well want to speak to her about it in the future, but for now she'd done everything she could to get the truth out there. So what did happen to Fred in 1976? The rumours have been continually swirling since Fred's disappearance and have only become more persistent since Janet's confession. Looking back at the evidence that was discovered at the time, it was clear that Fred's disappearance was out of character. From the research that I have done, there is no doubt that Fred loved his farm and the animals. He was a very hard-working man and would not have just walked out on it. 
the fact that his cap was left behind and that his dogs weren't with him also raised some red flags for those that knew him. The theory that he may have committed suicide also does not seem to make much sense, because as Lynette stated in the documentary, he would have been unable to hide his own body, and some evidence of this may have been discovered by now. The area was searched thoroughly in the days after his disappearance, and there was nothing at all found to suggest that this happened. The strange thing is that there was no sign of a struggle or foul play of any kind. There is, of course, Janet's confession to consider. I really struggled with this confession and couldn't quite make my mind up about what I think about it. It's clear that Janet has stood by her recovered memories and believes that she did murder Fred. However, from the police's point of view, there has been no evidence found to corroborate what she's saying. If we analyse the content of Janet's confession, it makes sense that she would have been the last person to see Fred before his disappearance, as she spent the most time at the farm. It's difficult to know if the rape and the murder, however, did happen, as it's based on Janet's memories, and while I do not want to dismiss the fact that these could have happened, they cannot be checked with evidence or other witness statements. The description that she gave of the murder does seem to have some detail, and has not changed in each retelling. However, as the detective stated, there are some things to consider, such as whether she would have been capable of moving Fred's body and burying it in a semi-frozen field. There has been much speculation about whether Janet is lying about the motives behind the murder and the allegations of rape. From the research I have done, there does not seem to be a motive in terms of the business, as she did not get the farm after Fred was declared dead, and it does not appear that she made lots of money from her book. This, of course, may not be the full story, and so I cannot really judge if there were any other motives. There are some people that believe that she did murder Fred, and it just did not occur in the way that she said it did, with her burying his body in another location. If this is the case, Janet would have to confess in order for the police to rule her out as a suspect, but as far as I'm aware, she was not on their radar as a suspect in the original investigation. It's difficult to establish the reasons for Janet's confession, and while it may be a credible lead, I am aware of the fact that confessions do happen for lots of different reasons. I am left with the sad facts that despite the lengthy investigation, a confession, and further searches, Fred has still never been found, and his family are still looking for answers as to what happened to him. Detective Inspector Paul Callum stated about the position of the case. Technically the case is still open, because the body was never found. But unless there is significant new evidence, then there's no active investigation, only an annual missing person review. Fred's disappearance has certainly not been forgotten by the local community and his family, and I would hope that if someone did know something about it, they would contact Derbyshire Constabulary at 101. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I am extremely interested to find out what you all think about it, because I've really grappled with so many different theories in this case. It's certainly one that has you scratching your head. If you want to know more about the case, I've left the links I used in the show notes, including the ITV documentary. I have also left a link to Janet Hull and Helen Parker's book, The Stranger in My Life, if anyone is interested in reading that. Thanks to everyone for listening and recommending the podcast to people that you know. I know I've been doing this a lot recently for my family and friends who are also stuck inside and needing something new to get into. Thank you as always to my patrons who help make this happen every week. If you want to support us and get stickers, shoutouts and bonus episodes then head over and have a look. The link is in the show notes. I also just want to mention I've recently begun getting adverts on the podcast which you might have noticed and I am now providing ad-free early access to them on my Patreon if this is something you're interested in. Patrons receive this episode on Tuesday. I want to thank the five-star reviewer this week, Ceasefire, who left a very lovely review, so thank you. If you want to support us further, you can also leave a review wherever you listen, or you can head on over to our YouTube channel, where I upload the audio from our episodes. Subscribing to the channel is also really helpful. I'm always interested in hearing all your suggestions for cases. You can send me a message on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or you can also email me at theunseenpod at gmail.com. 
Stay tuned today for a promo from Anna at the Apple for the Teacher podcast, which is a true crime podcast about true crime in schools. As a teacher, this is definitely one I'll be listening into. As always, thanks for listening. I hope you're all keeping safe and I'll be back next week. I'm Caprice and this has been Unseen. Hello everyone, let me tell you about the Apple for the Teacher podcast. I'm Anna Thomas, a teacher and your host. So you're probably thinking it's about reading, writing and arithmetic, right? Well, think again. It's a fresh take on true crime, where you wouldn't expect to find true crime. In schools, yes, schools. I will share with you the tragic and shocking stories I have uncovered in my own profession. You will hear stories about murder, abduction,